had about oh, 15, 20 rides. Really? Yeah. So. And how old is she? She's three. Three, okay. Yes. And so she's been with me about a little over 30 days, maybe 45 days at this point. Um, and she was pretty much ready to be started when she came in, which doesn't always happen. Yeah. You know, I get in two and three year olds and they've never even been haltered before and they're in to start. Jeez. So I have to take at least 30 to 60 days getting them, you know, just to be a handleable right. horse before I hop on them. But she was pretty much ready to go. So just like when I got on that last mare who broke, finished barrel horse, I, uh, I bent her around. I'm doing the same thing with this one that's got 20 rides. And that's just, you know, warming their mind up, asking them to be soft, seeing where they're at today. She's been in a bridle for probably 15, 10 of those 20 rides. I always start them in a halter. Um, so, I mean, it's not super new to her, but. Still pretty, still yeah, pretty fresh. Yeah. <laughs> she's going to chew on it a little bit. Of course, that's okay. She's just figuring everything out. And she's not to the point where, I mean, this is the beginning of getting them to, you know, get down here and uh, get soft this way. But she's not to the point where I can put two reins on her and right. like, get her head down. That that comes with a lot of other <laughs> advanced stuff in the future. Well, and also making sure that she's laterally flexed will help make sure to keep you safe if she does go to be spooky yeah. or something like that. It's hard to get one to stop if they can't, you know. Right, and that's the first thing. I think I made a post the other day where I said, um, if I could only pick three things that I had on a horse before I got on them, it would be flexing, because that's my emergency brake. You know, if something goes wrong, I just, all I need to do is this and I'm good. <laughs> but um, the other thing I said was my ride from the side exercise, and that's basically where I throw a hand over. You know, I'll show you. I go like this, and I, I have them where I can flex them on this side. And then I just ask them to go forward. And I'll bang on the saddle, move it around right here, um, just to desensitize. But what this does is it kind of eliminates that confusion to take that first step. Because our horses are really used to us leading them to ask them to go or lunging them to ask them to go. But they're not used to us being basically on them and asking to go from behind. So when I do this for the first time, I'll just kind of use my little rein and ask him to go forward and now she's already done this obviously she's on her 20th ride so <laughs> she's well versed but then I can you know make sure everything works like my emergency brake and I can stop them yeah that's crucial yes and I, I you know some people do the whole ride from the side thing like literally and they'll do like this but I don't know I would be too scared that something wrong would happen and my leg would get stuck and I'll do this like at a standstill to get them, you know, to where I can flap over here, pet on them, pet on their butt. And I'll like take my leg over, do this whole deal. But like as far as moving out like this, I'm not confident enough in my abilities. I feel like I'll get my leg stuck and I'll fly backwards if something were to go wrong. Yeah. So I don't know. That's just another thing that's to each his own. But I personally like the whole walking feel next to them. Um, and then I think I said the third thing was... Uh, oh, just being able to get on them on and off, on and off, on and off. I will get on a horse probably a hundred times almost before I ever ask him to go forward just because the crawling off and the, you know, getting back on them and swinging your leg over, rubbing them like I just did, it's so crucial um, because when we ride, we don't just sit there. You know, we like move around sometimes, pet on them, come up here, our legs move and stuff. So I'm trying to get them as comfortable with that as possible before they ever take a step out because again the whole idea with all these things is to eliminate that confusion that would scare a horse make a horse want to react like bucking or you know just do anything to get one of us hurt um you know the most important thing to me is that they number one move out and number two can flex and i can stop obviously and of course is that they're comfortable doing all that stuff you know if i get on them and they're kind of like acting like a stick of dynamite then I know that I need to go back and I need to restart and, you know, find that hole wherever it is that they're scared of having me on their back moving 
who knows. Um, so once they can do that pretty comfortably, I can get them, you know, loping out, um, they'll stop. Then I'm going to start working on my steering and uh, my backup. So um, the first thing I do, and this can be in a halter or a snaffle, at this point I've already probably ground drove them in a snaffle so they, um, they kind of already know how to at least give to it um, laterally. So the first thing I'll do is I'll bring my hand out and what I'm looking for is for this inside leg to follow my hand and step with it, okay? So if I pull her around here, I'm looking for that inside leg to do that right there. Okay, so at first she was kind of like just stepping around it, but I wanted her to follow my hand and step to it, okay? So I'll do that again. So I ask for her nose here and I want her to follow that nose, follow my hand, step out like that, okay? And I'll do it on the other side where she's a little bit better so y'all can see a better picture. But basically what I'm looking for is, oh sorry, is that right there, that right there. And that looks like a pivot at this point on that side. But um, this is kind of the start of your steering, okay? So if she can just take, if I can take my hand out and she can learn how to follow it, then I can start going out here you know, at a faster pace. And I can start pulling my hand out, waiting for her to come to it and then releasing, going off in a straight line. If I wanna cut across again, I'm gonna pull my hand out, release her right there. Maybe I wanna go this way. Pull my hand out, release. And so that's just her following her nose and following my hand. Whoa. So again, the first step was to get her to do this, right? Okay, that was step one. She's comfortable doing that, then I can move on. Step two was getting her to move out. Okay, so maybe I'm at the fifth ride or so, or the you know eighth ride, and now we can do step three, which is to do this while you're moving. And then, okay, so technically she's doing the right thing, right? She was moving and she gave me her face, but I was looking for her to move forward and step that foot out like that. So, like I said, she's had 20 rides and most of those rides have been in the round pin. I've started just riding her out in here a little bit. But one thing I wanted to talk about is um, kind of how I'm steering her out here. Um, you know, I think a lot of us kind of want control on these young horses and we don't let them have a lot of loose reins all the time, especially when there's like, you know, first ride in a big arena or something. But in doing that, um, it's kind of counterintuitive because if you're constantly trying to ride them, you know, like a broke horse and use your inside rein a lot and stuff, they're gonna, you're gonna like really crush their confidence because they don't necessarily know how to do all that. And they're just focusing on moving out, right? Because, you know, they probably haven't been ridden in a space this big and they don't really know what to do. They're going to be a little squirrely, right? So I like to just kind of, now we're going to do something interesting over here. Okay. I like to just kind of let them out on a loose rein and let them tell me where they want to go. When I first did this on her, usually they want to go back to that gate because that's where they came in and that's where their buddies are. But now she's kind of to where she kind of wants to walk down here, cruise down, explore a little bit. Um, and then if there's a spot where we get stuck or something and she wants to circle around, I'll take that as an opportunity to work on moving her feet or getting her to follow her nose and then we'll walk out again. Um, so like she's kind of paying attention to that over there. I may just kind of check in with her and say, hey, get her ears back on me, step around and go forward again. But I'm not going to micromanage her and try to like really steer her and act like she's a broke horse basically. So I think, you know, a lot of people complain about the younger horses being super squirrely all over the place. And yeah, they may be like that for the first couple rides or so, like she's trying to come in and say hi to you. But if you just let them go and let them pick their direction, they'll move out just fine. Um, and you know, like I said, if they get stuck somewhere, take that as your opportunity to work on something. And then eventually they'll say, this isn't the total ideal place to be. 
maybe I want to go explore over there and that's how they start moving out but again you don't want to be the person to constantly micromanage them because you're just going to crush their confidence so we were talking about kind of the concept of not nagging a horse um, you know when you nag somebody uh, to do something they oftentimes don't want to do it like if you ask somebody to clean the dishes like they're like golly you already asked me a bunch of times why why do i need to keep why do you need to keep nagging me well I would have done it the first time if you like exactly it. exactly and so one thing um, that i've done with my personal horses is like taking them to a roping and not roping right like if you just take them to a barrel race in this instance and every single time you take them out you go and you gut them and you work them hard and whatever they're going to start to resent it you know it's just going to be a kind of a nagging yeah. thing or if you if you come in here and all you do is yank on them they're like this is no fun. And like you said, with the barrel racing, it's going to get to the point where they're like, oh man, we have to get in the trailer. I know what's going to happen now. And then you're going to see that they're going to be like, mm, and you're going to think, oh, my horse has a trailer loading issue now. Right. But in reality, they just know what comes next. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're not, they're not dumb. And so that's what I'll do. I'll sometimes I'll go to a roping, not rope at all, not rope at all. I just go there, ride them around a little bit, yeah. let them stand tied, go hang out and have something to drink and call it good. Yeah. It's, it's important to do those things. <laughs> but usually it's to the gate or you know wherever their buddies are they'll get magnets uh, and I call it magnets it's just wherever they want to lean right um, they'll usually get it where the least amount of work comes so if you have a spot even you know where you sit and talk to your friends or all three you know horses just stand there together they'll probably say this is a lot easier to do than what you're asking me to do on the rail over here yep so that's where they'll want to go right back in so and I'm working this side because her other side doesn't need it so again I'm being the opportunist and I'm saying what can I work on over here there you go and then when she's done so then whenever I want to stop her I'm going to be very strategic about that too where I want to rest her so she's kind of sticking on this side while she is moving out she's kind of sticking on this side of the arena so now I may say hey let's go over here where you haven't been yet see now she's getting squirrely and I'm going to tell her let's rest your feet right in this corner so I get to rest I get to relax and then when I move her out again, the goal is hopefully to get her to come all the way around and want to um, be over here. All right, so I got my first circle. Um, we've, I've been riding her about, I don't know, 10 minutes in here, maybe less. Um, and that's all I worked on was just kind of finding those spots she wanted to really stick next to. Um, and I got my first circle, so I'm gonna let her sit here and be rewarded. Um, and that kind of goes along too with holding them a lot. You know, if they're constantly leaning towards the gate or something and you just hold them off of it, you're not really fixing the problem, right? You're just kind of like, oh, avoiding, avoiding, and then you can't necessarily get the results you want if they're constantly, like, trying to go somewhere. If, you're, if you want their shoulders, like, nice and elevated and their bodies nice and straight, they can't be like, oh, but I want to be over here, but uh, okay, I guess I'll, uh, I guess I'll round this corner and then we'll just do it again and then, okay, I'll go around the corner, right? You need to make sure that they're they're fully with you and not like oh over here I want to be by my friends because otherwise it just gets in the way of the training yep no doubt and that goes for every horse not just the youngsters like you know the broke horses too they and, all need it yeah well and like this is her 20th ride or so um me doing all this is making sure that wherever she goes next whether she stays with me or her owners decide to take her to any trainer really that she is fully prepared and ready for that you know I'm getting her to the point where anybody can get on her eventually and train this horse because if you know you don't want to make them uh too I don't know in tune to you I guess but I mean you do at the same time but I don't want to get her to where she's like super super knocked off the bridle and you know somebody that wants to do I don't know something different where they need to be stiffer gets on her and they're like well I can't do much with this horse you know 
Yeah, need all around horses. Yeah, and the foundation is so important. Like, don't just be sending your horse to any Joe Schmo colt starter because <laughs> this is like the the start of their career in a sense. You know, they they need a good foundation in order to build that nice house you want or you know reach your performance goals. Yeah, hundred percent. Good job.